Casey and his friends are becoming successful entrepreneurs through their company, which makes and sells dog washing wads. They've enjoyed doing business in a pure market economy, where they make their product and they sell it for the price they set, without interference. They're about to learn a few new economic lessons. Adam Smith, the granddaddy of economics, talks about something called the invisible hand. Hoo-ha! I've heard of the invisible man, but the invisible hand? What's he mean, the invisible hand? Well, think of it this way. The United States is a market economy, so it relies on the price system to answer basic economic questions, what to make, how to make it, and who to produce it for. The price system has got a lot of other names, too. Uh, capitalism, market economy, free enterprise, and laissez-faire. Here's how the price system works. Changing prices in your marketplace drives economic activity. What's economic activity? It's how you make money. Let's say your whole neighborhood goes crazy about your dog washing wands, so more and more people buy them from you. If this is the only change in your market, increased demand will cause the price to go up. That means your company will make more money. If your company makes more money, you can make and sell more wands. But it may also mean more companies will get into the dog washing wand business. When that happens, the supply of wands will go up and the price will come down. Get it? Sometimes prices get out of whack. What happens then? If goods are from the public sector, like utilities, the government can step in to a market economy and set prices. You mean they could tell us how much to charge for our wands? No, they can't interfere with individual entrepreneurs, but they can set prices for the public sector. If the price is set above true market price, which you know is set by supply and demand, you end up with a surplus. If the government sets the price lower than true market prices, then you'll end up with a shortage. Why? Because the quantity of goods supplied by the producers will decrease and the consumer demand will increase. That's what happened in America with gasoline in the 1970s and again recently. Is that the only thing the government tries to control? No. Sometimes the government wants to protect American producers from foreign competition. How? Well, suppose a foreign manufacturer finds out that dog washing wands are the hottest selling item in the country. They decide they can make them cheaper and faster in their factory, ship them to the U.S. and still sell them for less than your company. Oh, you mean like the things we get from China? Well, the government could decide to protect your business interests and charge a special tax called a tariff on the imported wines. You mean when the cheaper foreign stuff comes in, the government adds a tariff to it to make it the same price as ours. Now I see what government controls are all about. Now, before you go thinking that government control is something bad, you have to know the role of government in the economy. Let's see what the money man on TV has to say about that. Hoo-ha! The government! In an economy, the government provides a legal framework, ensures competition, provides public goods, controls outside factors, redistributes income, and stabilizes the economy. What's he mean by outside factors? Here's what I mean. I'm talking about things like air and water pollution. That's an example of a negative factor. You kids going to school and getting an education, that's a positive factor. That's why governments use tax money to support schools. There was one other thing I didn't understand, redistributing income. Well, that's when the government uses tax money to help people with little or no income, like food stamps, public housing, or aid to families with dependent children programs. Hey, I'll bet they need dog washing wines in Europe. They love dogs in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Moneypenny here with a review of Economics Academy 101 program. And if you're playing at home, you'll see it in the program. That's number four. Now in this program, we learned about the great, great granddaddy of free market economics, Adam Smith, and his idea called the invisible hand. Ah! Our student commerce company gang was making and selling their dog washing wands in a pure market economy without any government interference. <laughs> we call that fantasy land. 
Our own economy is called a market economy, which relies on the price system to answer our basic economic questions. What to make, how to make it, and who to make it for. The price system has several other names. Capitalism, market economy, free enterprise, and a French term, laissez-faire, which kind of means hands off. Adam Smith's idea about an invisible hand says that changing prices in an economy drive economic activity. Well, it's how you make money through jobs and entrepreneurship. All right, let's say everyone likes the product you make, you know, like the dog washing wand. And because they like them, more people buy them. Now, if this is the only thing that changes, the price of the wands will rise because of the demand. So, your company will make more money. <laughs> now, if you make more money, you can make and sell more of your product. But other companies will want to get into the same business. Then the supply will rise and the price will fall. But sometimes the government steps into a market economy and the public sector sets the price of something. That usually happens with things like utilities, you know, electricity, water, etc. Now, if the government price is above the market price, then you end up with a surplus. On the other hand, if the government sets a lower price than the market price, you'll end up with a shortage because the number of goods supplied by the big producers will decrease and the consumer demand will increase. A good example of that was the gasoline shortage during the 1970s, causing gas lines and high gas prices. The government can also help businesses by protecting American producers from foreign competition. Now that happens when foreign producers can make things cheaper than our own producers and sell them to us for less. When that happens, the government can add a tariff or a special tax on the imported products. The government also plays other roles in the economy. Government provides a legal framework for the economy, ensures competition, provides public goods, controls outside factors, redistributes income, and stabilizes the economy. Now, we learned that those outside factors affecting the economy are negative and positive. Negative factors can be things like air and water pollution or climate changes. Positive factors are things like public education, which prepares young people just like you to take the jobs that the economy provides. Now, the program also taught that the government also redistributes income. Now, this happens when tax money <laughs> is given back to the people in the form of public assistance, housing help, medical care, and food stamps. So think about Adam Smith and the amazing invisible hand and how that affects the prices we pay for the products we use. I'm Professor Moneypenny, both hands, for Economics Academy. <laughs>